Hey everyone, my name is Amber and today we're talking about land development, the process and the land development feasibility checklist. That's coming up. So here's the process. Anytime you're doing a development, uh, especially land development, you will have a block of land that you would want to maximize so when i say maximize that means you want to split that into different size blocks and you want to get as many blocks as possible which is basically in other words highest best possible use of the site so no matter where you are in the world your process would look something like this one you find the site so you've got the site and uh, you want to maximize so in order to figure out what the development potential of that site is going to be uh, you would want to be able to hire consultants and there are two main consultants that you would need one you would need a civil engineer and number two you would need a land surveyor now you might be able to you might be calling them something else in your part of the world but that is what that it will, they, these are the two people that you would need or two consultants that you would need in order to figure out the third one would be your geotech consultant you can get a soil test done so that's 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 what that's what it actually includes so you've got you found a site you hire these people to figure out what is the highest best possible use of this site so which is basically highest best possible use which is basically what is the maximum number of blocks that i can put on this side so that i can increase my yield or return or or maximize the, the return that i've got Second thing would be once you've got some sort of conceptual design or something, you would go through a planning process. Now, in your part of the world, it might be called a zoning department or somewhere here in Australia, it's called a council. And you have to go through that process so to be able to get your permit that you are now allowed to put in, you know, X amount of blocks on this side. So that is only a permit. That does not, that will never let you uh, start selling these because there are no services connected to this site. So basically your third step would be once you've got your permit or DA, which stands for development approval, which is your development approval. Once you've got that, your third step would be to be, uh, to be able to pro get the services to these sites so imagine this you got a block of land you can't tie you can't have individual titles on this subdivision you all have a permit but you can't get all your titles unless you connect your services to the site so your services are going to be your gas your water uh, your electricity all of these things apart from that each block you gotta you gotta be aware that how are you gonna manage the waste from each of the blocks so waste management and your sewer connection and uh, your stormwater connection so what will happen is that every site for example something like this so uh, let's go this would have some sort of a pit which is owned by your council or your county or somewhere where you got to connect to so you will have some sort of uh, all these either you'll have the easements and everything uh, on these blocks which is your civil engineer and your land surveyor will work together to be able to put together a concept for something like this and if the concept satisfies the your zoning department or your council or your permitting department uh, they will then approve that so that you can then be able to do that so each block would would may or may not have a location for sewer or a location for easement uh, and so on so depending upon your zoning whatever details that there are in your zoning 
plan or your whatever the overlays are for the side what you can and cannot do on the side based on all of that you will uh, you will then be able to connect you know to the council in ex existing infrastructure so that all your waste management your stormwater everything comes here plus they would also have the water connection and everything that is already coming close by to the site somewhere that you can bring to your site so all these things are usually water authority is different from your planning authority and you would need to get permission from them and then they, that's a separate process so it doesn't matter where you are in a nutshell you'll have a block of land that you have to take through a process so so you your first step is you go site you've got uh, a process that you have to go through that will then give you a da which is your development approval during that time you will involve you will engage with different consultants and your consultants would be your civil guy and your land surveyor who will figure out what can be done on the site based on the zoning and everything you you get your da once you've got your da you can't get your titles um, until you've got all the services connected once you've got your services connected that is the time when 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 you can get this land guy back in there the land surveyor or whichever department is, is in charge so that they can then seal the plan and say look this is they've basically done you basically done in physical form uh, exactly what was approved on the plans so if they had approved that you know most of your blocks will be like this but some of them would be bigger so you have to then show them okay somebody would come in and do a last final check and say look uh, all the services are connected and the everything that you've done on the side is based on uh, what you've got then the title department will then issue you your titles for each of these and then you can you can sell them based on uh, what it is in, in some places you can do an off the plan sale however the sale will not settle until this whole process titling has gone through so it might be an off the plan contract it's a different thing and in different parts of the world it's treated a little bit differently but that is how it is going to be so this is in a nutshell your process so if i was to go and have a look at my process so the first thing is that i need to figure out the highest best possible use for the site figure out what i can do the maximum number of blocks that i can have on the site so this is basically maximum lots that increases my return and then I go through the planning process once I've gone through the planning process I will get my permit and my DA which will give me a development approval the development approval would have um, all the details about where the easements are going to be uh, so I where the easements and sewer location things like that um, and once you've got all those details uh, and the next process would be to actually connect all these services which is basically your gas water electricity as well as your waste management your uh, sewer connection your stormwater connection and so on they will then hook up with the with your council or county or your um, or the state or the neighborhood or whoever is in charge for that it will have to hook up to their existing infrastructure this is where your infrastructure levy or infrastructure charges or or your council contribution existing infrastructure and um, this is where that those those things would come up once you've got all those things then basically the entire process is as simple you can then get your da you've done the work on the site uh, once you've got your da you can have your titles and you can sell those lots or you can you can either go you can sell just the lots for example so it can be just the lots it can be your house and land package or you can do you, you can do all sorts of things with the with the builder who can then you know do the build for you or and you provide the land package them together 
in a contract of sale and that's how you can do all of these things so let's look at all the different things that would that you would need to come up with so that your land development feasibility uh, is complete so let's go over the checklist now so let's go through our checklist so uh, all up you would have maybe eight areas where you will have to find information before you can start filling up your feasibility so in terms of um, um, of this mind map sort of working as a checklist uh, you've got your acquisition costs you've got land value and taxes the taxes could be your stamp duty percentage um, if you are uh, in Australia or UK um, or you would have transfer taxes uh, and whether or not they are applicable to that you'll have to find out again there could be further costs depending upon how your deal is structured for example do you have a joint venture with the landowner that you're doing um, if you are then there could be other legal costs to get a joint venture agreement in place uh, do you have an option on the land where you sign an agreement with the with the land seller that you're gonna buy this land uh, sometime in the future um, and you can go through your planning process and your development approval process uh, while you've got an option on that so depending upon all these things you might have other costs involved um, uh, in terms of acquisition then you've got your soft costs your soft costs are basically all your planning fees your permit reports and surveys the soil report for example the, you go and engage consultants like Lance Aware, civil engineer and geotech uh, engineer and then based on all your soft costs you know um, uh, all your soft costs and your hard costs you'll be you'll have a, a loan to cost ratio uh, from your lender and um, another thing that is part of this is an infrastructure levy or contributions now sometimes some lenders would consider that the reason I have that in a highlighted uh, dotted box is because sometimes the lenders would be uh, looking at your overall project and the yields that the project brings in they might be able to fund that um, as part of the hard cost uh, or they may not they may refuse to do that so basically these are certain costs that the developer needs to keep in mind that they might come out of their pocket um, instead of being funded so uh, it depends upon where you are again uh, in which part of the world you are and you might have other sources of finance so there are basically sources and there are uses so these are all the uses and where is it going to get funded from so it can only get funded either from debt or from the developer so it has to come from either of these two things so when i say developer that means if you are a general partner you might have a limited part limited partners behind you uh, or investors behind you who would be funding this up so all costs all development costs have to be funded by somebody uh, whether it's coming from the debt or from your pocket so then you got your hard costs hard costs are basically the cost as we discussed in the process the cost of getting all these services to each of those lots so once you get all the services to the lots so that a title can be issued for each lot that is the time you can you can sell them or close the sales uh, for them I mean you can start your pre-sales marketing and everything but you can't close them until you've got a title in hand and the title in hand is dependent upon you getting the services to the site so once you've got all the services those will make up all your hard costs uh, you might have other costs in the sense that your lender might have conditions that you have to have pre-sales if you have to have pre-sales there could be uh, a pre-sale contract that, the, that that would be a little bit different from a normal uh, contract of sale there could be listing costs there could be marketing material like holding brochures photography or renders um, that you might want to use in your marketing campaign uh, your sales agents commission so these are the things that would go into your feasibility so if you're talking about land development feasibility study checklist uh, these are the things that you have to be aware of so when it comes to your finance costs uh, things like is there any finance on land so will you be settling on the land holding it for a period of time and then starting the process or starting the process or while the process is going you'll be paying some uh, some uh, holding costs in order to hold the land if you already close the sale with it um, there there are funding tables that the lender might have that that uh, that will then determine uh, yeah that will separate all your soft costs and your hard costs 
and uh, will de then determine your uh, loan to cost ratio or the or the LVR, the loan to value ratio uh, that you can borrow. Then there will be your construction finance, which is um, how your money is going to come in, what your loan draw utilization percentage is going to be. Um, so these are things that you don't really have to worry about because if you've done your model correct, um, these things are then taken care of. So. Um, uh, in your feasibility, you would want to have a target development margin. So if you're taking all this risk in order to do this development, there's a certain percentage that you want to make on the cost. So if you plug that number in, you get a value of what you should be paying for as a value for this land based on its development potential. So if you can get 50 lots on that thing and you want to make 20% on your development margin, uh, you want to plug that, you should be able to plug that in and figure out that is the maximum price that I should pay for this block of land. Uh, if you've got your, your investors or your limited partners in there, what sort of return are they going to get? So this, all these things have to be uh, part of your feasibility. So when it comes to sensitivity analysis, you would then wanna be able to figure out what happens if the costs go up by a certain percentage or if the timeline changes uh, or if my sales uh, go up or down uh, a certain value what would that look like what kind of effect would that have on my bottom line so that's all uh, with the lead development feasibility study checklist and I'll see you in another video thanks very much for watching